Welcome to Prezime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 28 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the ASP.NET bulleted list control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 25, 26 and 27 of this video series. In ASP.NET, there are several list controls like drop-down list, checkbox list, radio button list, list box and bulleted list. Just like every other list control, bulleted list is also a collection of list item objects. Items can be added to the bulleted list in the HTML source at design time or in the code behind file at runtime programmatically. Bulleted list, like any other list control, supports data binding. For example, a bulleted list can be bound to a database table or to an XML file. Now let's look at some of the useful properties of bulleted list that can be customized further to suit our application needs. Let's flip to Visual Studio, drag and drop a bulleted list control onto the web form. And we know that a bulleted list is a collection of list item objects and those list item objects can be added in the HTML source at design time. I have some of them already typed, so let's copy and paste them there. Let's select all the HTML format selection to format that properly. Okay, so if I flip this to the design mode, now look at this. By default, it's showing us an un unordered list. Okay, the bulleted list by default shows an unordered list. So when we run this, it will actually render this bulleted list control as an unordered list. In HTML, we have, you know, the unordered list which we create using ul tag. All right. Now let's say instead of this unordered list, I want you know an ordered list where we can show numbers instead of the bullets. How do we do that? Go to the properties of the bulleted list, and there is a property called blitz style, and set that to numbered. And the moment we do that, look at that, we have these numbers one, two, three, four. So instead of the bullets now, we have the numbers. And when we run the application now, instead of generating an unordered list, it will actually generate an ordered list as you can see here. Okay. Now, does the ordered list start numbering at one every time? No, you can customize that as well. There is a property called the first bullet number okay which can be used to specify the value at which you want the ordering to start so now let's say if I say that to 10 and look at what's gonna happen it's gonna start at 10 which is again very simple and straightforward now, if you look at the bullet style property you have several pro you know styles there you can display alphabets so when I select lower alphabets look at that it starts from J because I have selected 10 if I put that to 1 it will start at 1 so there's a lot of customization that you can do. I can select upper alphabets or I can select the Roman numbers lower and upper and I can also you know use symbols like disk, circle or square or custom image. You can customize this to suit your needs. So when I specify custom image as the bullet style then you know, you need to specify the bullet image URL. You're saying, I'm going to use my custom image. So in that case, you'll have to tell where is that custom image, what's the path of that one, using this bullet image URL property. Now, I already have an image here. Let's copy that. Let's go to our Visual Studio. And within the Solution Explorer, let's add a new folder to our web application project. Let's call that images. And let's paste this image into that folder okay so I have an image here now if we go to this web form select our bullet list and we set bullet style is custom image and the bullet image URL is going to come from this images folder so let's select that okay and look at that it's using that image there so now when we run this as you might expect you know it uses those images that we have specified so a lot of customization is possible as far as the you know display of this bulleted list is concerned bullet list bullet style now there is another very useful property called the display mode now by default the display mode is text now let's flip this back let's go to the properties of the bulleted list let's choose maybe numbered or let's not choose any style which defaults to the unordered list. Okay, so there is another property called 
display mode and if you look at this it takes three values text hyperlink and link button by default it's text so the list items rendered as text but then you can also specify the display mode as hyperlink in which case all these list items are clickable the user can actually click them and go to the respective pages or you know even external sites now let's say i want these hyperlinks now when you want your list items within the bullet list, bulleted list to be hyperlinks, then the value will actually be the URL to which you want to navigate. It could be a page within your application or it could be an external site. So let's copy these list items just to save some time. And in the source, instead of using these list items, I'm going to use these ones. Okay? So obviously, when we run this now, the list items are going to be rendered as hyperlinks and the user can actually click on them and the user will be navigated to the site so when i when we run this look at the hyperlinks there now as i move my mouse over these hyperlinks look at that the urls on the uh, browser at the bottom okay so obviously when i click this now it's going to navigate me to that url i clicked on blue google so it's going it's taking me to the google website Okay. Now, if you look, if you notice, the Google website has opened in the same URL. Now, let's say I want this uh, target web page to be opening in its own window or a new tab. Is that possible? Absolutely. All you have to do is this bulleted list has got another property called target, where you can specify, you know, whether you want to open it in the same window or in a different bar browser window. If you want to open that within a within a different browser window, then specify the target as underscore blank so now if we run this and try to click on any of the link then that website will be opened in its own URL let me click on YouTube look at that it's opening in another tab within the same browser window I have my original page here all right so that's about display modes text and hyperlink. Now another interesting value this display mode can take is the link button. Now if you have seen until now, you know, we haven't discussed any event of a bulleted list control. Now if I double click this bulleted list control, let's see what's going to happen. I double click this, look at that. The bulleted list actually exposes a click event which means the user can click on this list item. Now if we go to the properties of the bulleted list, and change the display mode to link button now these links are going to be displayed as link buttons upon which the user can click and when when the user clicks on them it's going to post back to the server and you can tap into that click event and you can identify which link button the user has actually clicked and retrieve the text value and index of that list item let's see how to do that okay so now to retrieve the list item upon which the user has clicked we will use the bulleted list event argument here now if you look at that e okay there is a property called index which will give us the index of the item that the user has clicked on so we have four items here it's a zero based index so it's going to start at zero okay so this index will give us the item upon which the user has clicked and now how do I retrieve the text and the value of that list item it's very simple so this is a bulleted list so bulleted list one dot items collection so the items collection is going to return us the list of list items within that bulleted list but we don't want all the list items we want the list item upon which the user has clicked so I'm going to use the index of the that list item and how do I get the index using e dot index property okay so that's gonna give us the list item upon which the user has clicked so list item li so once we have the list item, all we have to do is retrieve the text and the value of that and print that onto the screen. So response.write, we want the text, so text is equal to li.text and then to properly format this, use the HTML break. So let's copy, paste all that and we know the value 
is equal to li dot value and if you want the index we already have the index using this bulleted list event args ob object so e dot index that's an integer so let's convert that to string and then get rid of this HTML and let's change this text to index okay so let's run this now so obviously now when we click on the item the web page will be posted back to the server and we have the option to actually retrieve the text the value and the index if I click on Gmail Gmail is the text value is that and the index is 3 because that's a zero based index and Gmail is the last item within that list on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day